the tomb. Too many of us are living in the graveyard. And it's time we come out the tomb. Hallelujah. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know is the hope of your calling was the exceeding greatness of your power to us who do believe. We'll, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Hide me behind the cross so only you could be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And all the citizens of the kingdom say amen. 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 If you've got your Bibles, would you go with me to Exodus? Exodus, the first chapter. I want to talk to you about purpose. Purpose is the original intention of a thing. It was what the purpose is the reason why the thing was created. Amen. And that means that everyone in here came because of purpose. Because you wouldn't have been born if there wasn't something God needed done that made you necessary. So you came with purpose. Purpose always comes before the product. Before they made the podium, they knew exactly what purpose it would serve. And before God allowed you to be created, he knew exactly what purpose you would serve. Now there is an enemy who's trying to stop you from fulfilling your purpose. His job is to stop what God started in your life. And let me tell you, he started way back before you were even born planning on aborting your vision. He was going to do everything he could to destroy your life. And that's why a lot of times children are affected when they're young babies because the devil is trying to destroy them before they fulfill their purpose. So the storm will always come before you get to your destination. And whenever you realize who you really are in Christ and you begin to make a difference, the enemy sends a storm. Because he's trying to stop you from claiming more territory. Come on, Bob. Come on. Now we serve a king and a king gets his glory from territory. So let me tell you something. The devil doesn't want you to fulfill your purpose. And so the devil would love to kill you as a baby. He would have loved to kill you in the womb. Some of y'all almost died in the womb. But you made it anyway. And if he can't kill you in the womb, he'll kill you when you get born. Listen, when Moses, when Moses was first even thought about, the enemy had already sent an assignment to destroy his life. And before you were born, the devil knew exactly what you came to deliver to your generation. And let me tell you something. The enemy is selfish. So don't think for a minute because he was trying to destroy you. It was just about you. No, no, he was trying to destroy you because it was about everybody you came to touch. Come on, Bob. Come on. He was more concerned on. about who you was going to affect. Yeah. And then push came and shove, he bargained and cut a deal. Jeff Exodus. Let's start at 20. 
says, therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and this were midwives who he had instructed that every male child kill it in the womb. Back in the old times, they had midwives, and they would help give birth to the children. They would help the wives bring or deliver the child. And so the instruction was, kill the babies in the womb. Exodus 1 and verse 20. Kill the babies in the womb. All the male children. He was instructed, they were instructed to kill him in the womb. But the midwives had a fear for God. And so they refused to do so. And so when the leader found out that the babies were still being born, he asked them why did they do that. And they had a good reason. They said, listen, because the Hebrew women, they, they're very lively. So they give birth quick. We, before we could get there, they had to deliver it. So see, he was trying to kill Moses in the womb. And so because he couldn't kill him in the womb, he gave him instructions to kill him in the river. Now, everybody's river is different. But he still wanted to kill him in the river or in the womb. He couldn't kill him in the birth canal, so he tried to kill him in the river. When he couldn't kill him in the river, he made him out of kill. Y'all ain't going to hear what I'm saying. I said when he couldn't kill him in the river, he made him a killer. Because passion without purpose will kill you. You already know the first thing Moses did was kill the man. He had good intentions, but he wasn't governed by God's power. And he had no peace. Because peace is the foundation of your authority. Listen, the devil had a hit on you a long time ago. He had every intention on destroying your life. Because he doesn't want you to fulfill your purpose. He doesn't want you to touch the lives you came to touch. He doesn't want you to deliver what you came to bring to your generation. So he starts as a young child affecting your life. He'll bring you through all kinds of trauma, all kinds of disappointment, rejection, abandonment, hurt, criticism, ostracized, anything he can do to break your spirit. Come on, come on. He's been working at it for a long time. He knew what you would be before you were born. He knew more about you than you knew about yourself. He had more faith in your potential than you did. Come on, Pop, that's serious. So he wanted to stop you before you even start. And the reason why I know he had more faith in your potential is because he was trying to stop you before you started. Couldn't kill him in the birth canal. Couldn't kill him in the river. So he set up to make him a killer. Yeah. But thank God, God could take and take a curse and turn it into a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. God could take you out of your situation. And strengthen you. And make you everything he birthed you to be. Now listen, whatever the devil uses to destroy you is what God's going to use you to deliver others with. Say that, Pop. Say that. Say that. See, he was trying to destroy him with water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses means to be drawn out. Isn't that something? But he tried to kill Moses in the birth canal with water. If he had his way to drown Moses in the womb. He couldn't drown him in the womb, so he tried to drown him in the river. But see, he knew Moses' potential. He knew that Moses had the potential to deliver God's people through water. I said, if you're struggling
dealing with drugs and the devil been trying to dis 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 destroy you with drugs is because you're called to deliver people from drugs. Come on, Bob. Come on. Maybe you struggle with anger. God wants to deliver people through you from anger. Maybe it's disappointment. Maybe rejection. I don't know what your river is. But everybody's river is different. Maybe it's abuse. I don't care what it is. I'm telling you that whatever it is you're struggling with is because God's going to use that to bring others out. It could be homosexuality. The devil had his way. You'd have been a homosexual a long time ago. Because the devil played for keeps. I know this is not a popular message. But I ain't into popularity anyway. I want you to hear what you need so that you can serve the world your gift. The devil knew what you came to deliver. And so that's why some of us was affected while we were children. Some of, some of us was affected by rejection. Some of us went through oppression. Some of us went through all kinds of things that wasn't right. But it was the enemy. It was strategically planned to alter your life. Abandonment. Somebody left. And it caused you to be mad and angry with everything and everybody. Or your caregivers didn't protect you. Somebody touched you when you were young. And, and now you're struggling because you don't understand that nobody knows you're broken. Well. And you can't share your pain and your hurt with nobody because you don't trust anybody. You got trust issues. But it was the devil. He assaulted you from the beginning. And your, your caregivers didn't protect you, so now you, you have to protect yourself. You, you become a god to yourself. And you've lost the ability to love. That's why you keep falling out of relationships because you don't trust anybody. And so you're blaming everybody. But who you should be blaming, that's the devil. For time's sake, I want you to go to the mark with me. And the title of this message is, Come Out the Tomb. Come Out the Tomb. Now, a tomb is a vault or a burial place. But, but if you look it up in the Greek, let me tell you what it is. It's to recall or to bring to remembrance. All right, let me say that again. A tomb in the Greek is to call or to bring to remembrance an event or something that happened, traumatic, that affected your life. And so sometimes when we go through these traumatic situations, we live in a tomb. Because we don't ever recover from whatever it was that took us there. And so that's why I said, come out the tomb. Because I don't, I don't know what brought you into the tomb, but I know what will bring you out. First, you got to lay down your pride. That's your first thing. Because pride will tell you nobody needs to know. Pride will tell you nobody knows when everybody sees. You're the only one that don't know everybody knows. Because we've learned to be hypocrites. We've learned to be an actor. And so a lot of times we go to the party, we the life for the party, but when we go home, we're depressed as hell. Because you're faking. You ain't tired of faking? Crying all by yourself. When you can share your pain 
with the Lord and let him heal you and make you whole. Some of us experience rejection. Man, let me tell you, rejection is not easy. And most of the people that I know that have been rejected, they work hard as hell to try to win over whoever rejects them. The more they reject them, the more they work to try to win them over. It becomes a behavior pattern. And so you go through one rejection after the other. And it's amazing to me that if you don't ever find Christ, you constantly draw the people who reject you. And the more people you go through, the worse you feel. You get to the point where you don't feel worthy of anything. You won't tell anybody that, but that's how you feel, like you piece of crap. And I'm telling you, God values your life. When the world rejects you, God accepts you. Somebody may have abandoned you. Somebody may have forsook you. They betrayed you. You gave them your trust and they, they violated you. And it hurts you so much that you've never been able to recover. And this is what I want to talk to you about. Come out of the tomb. A soul wound is always created by sin. Maybe somebody else sinned against you, or maybe you did a sin on your own accord. But it has put a soul wound in your life. Soul wounds are hard to be healed. Only way you can do that is if you come to God in worship. See, because when you come to God in worship, what you're saying is, Lord, you're bigger than whatever I'm struggling with. And I'm not ashamed to worship. See, too many of us are ashamed to worship. We, we, we too, too reserved in, in our approach. And, and that's why we can't get free. Because I'm too busy worrying about what David going to say. I, I, I'm too worried about Diddy talking about me rolling on the floor. Well, let me roll on the floor. As long as I get up unshackled. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, you worried about him talking about your holy roller. <laughs> Call me a holy roller because I'm a roll on the floor when God tells me. Amen. All soul wounds are created by sin. It's a memory of an event that wounded you. I say it's a memory of an event that wounded you. Something that happened that was traumatic and you hadn't been able to let it go. You buried it, but now it's called buried resentment. But it's still there. And I'm going I'm to I'm be honest with you. Until you deal with it, it's going to hinder your life. It's going to hinder your health and it'll even hinder your finances. Because as long as I have a soul wound, I give the devil legal right to assault me and to and to attack and torment me. And that's why we're dealing with torment. Because the devil has a legal right. But when I deal with the soul wound and I put it under the glory light and let the Lord heal me, he has no legal right. Amen. You want to know why your finances is drying up? Because you need to deal with that soul wound. Want to know why you're struggling in your health? Because you got a soul wound. And until you deal with the soul wound, you're not going to be made whole and you're not going to be able to pursue your destiny. And the devil knows it. And that's why he tells you not to tell anybody. Because he can keep you in bondage. He can hold you captive. Let's get to the story because I hadn't even taught, taught it on it yet. <laughs> Chapter 5 of Mark. It says, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, 
Immediately. Say immediately. immediately. Listen to this. Immediately, when he came out of the boat, a demon, the demon, the man possessed by a demon, came at him immediately. Soon as he came, but I want you to know, we didn't have time to read it, but before Jesus got to that territory, he encountered a storm. See, a lot of times you're moving toward territory that God wants you to claim to his glory, and all of a sudden, you find yourself in a storm. And the storm is strategically set to take you off course. Stop you from getting to that territory. Immediately they met him, my man, out of the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit who had been living amongst the tombs. See, this man had been living in the pain and the hurt of his trauma. And, and, and it got so bad till he began to cut himself. Some of y'all self-inflict. You, you might self-inflict with medicated prescription drugs. You may, you may self-inflict yourself with, with alcohol, sex. It could be a lot of things, but you're self-inflicted. And you're doing it because of the tomb. The wounds in your life that you never addressed. God said, today is the day. I'm calling you out the tomb. I like to steal Warren's message. Come on with your hands up. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a private joke. <laughs> Warren told me his next message would come out with your hands up. I thought I would use that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen at this. He was living amongst the tomb. He was living in his pain. He was living in his trauma. And so it took him out of where he should have been. But one thing I have to respect about this young man who was possessed by these demons is he knew how to worship. Listen at this. It says, no one could hold this man down, not even with chains. Because often he had been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had he pulled apart by him, and the shackle was broken in the pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. Boy, that's, that's serious. He was breaking chains, he was breaking shackles, and he was living amongst the tombs. See, when you hold unforgiveness, when you hold bitterness, resentment, when you hold that stuff, you open the door for the devil. Yes, sir. And people say, well, you're a Christian. You can't be demon-possessed. No, you can't be demon-possessed because the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. But you could be demonized. Right. You could be influenced from right. your mental capacity. That's right. That's right. The devil could control you Tell from the, the way you I'm think. Tell the truth, Bob. Listen, you know why media is so important? Because media relates to the people, whatever the message is. And if the message is messed up, the people are messed up. The Bible said Jesus is a mediator between God and man. Well, guess what? The soul is the medium between the spirit and the body. And that's why you could get a man's spirit saved in two seconds. But you don't get his soul saved because the Bible says you got to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. Soul saving is a job. That's why the Bible says he that wins his souls is wise. Because to win a soul means to convert someone from the way they used to think, to think the way God trained them to think. That's a job all by itself. This boy here was all messed up. But what I like is, he knew how to get an answer. 
See, listen at this. There was another, there's another dimension that we can live in. We live in this natural dimension. But I read in my Bible that you can live in two dimensions at the same time. You, you can live in the natural and in the spirit realm. But it's a decision we make every day. You want to see the miracles of God, you want to see the manifestations of God, you're going to have to live a certain way. You, you just can't live any kind of way to expect God to show up on, on every scene that you show up on. No, it don't work like that. There's a price that you're going to have to pay. And so I like to tell people, listen, if you go to a church and your pastor don't have an anointing to break that thing off you struggling with, you better find you another pastor. Come on, come on. Tell the truth. That goes for me as well. Tell the truth, tell the truth, Bob. Tell the truth. Hallelujah. Tell the truth. Well, tell the truth. <laughs> listen to this. Always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself. Some of y'all beat yourself all day long. Especially when you're by yourself. Talk about why you ain't never gonna be nothing, why you ain't got nothing. You know I'm talking the truth to you. I don't know why nobody loved me. I try my best. Every time I reach out to somebody, they dog me. They hurt me. Isn't that the truth? I'm, I'm tired of being hurt. Yeah. I'm always being victimized. Why me? Lord, have mercy. And so, you know, if you're not careful, the orphan spirit will fix himself up. And what he says is, okay, if I get out of this situation, I'll never be vulnerable like this again. And so now he loses the ability to trust. He loses his ability to trust in God as a safe haven. And that's why he can't serve God, because he don't trust him. Because he don't trust anybody. But he, but he dresses ugly up. Oh yeah, he dresses ugly up. Because when I come out, I got to look like I got it all together. Oh, I know I'm broken, but you don't. I know I'm tore up from the floor, but you don't. Because I know how to dress up ugly. Don't dress ugly up. Get rid of ugly. Hallelujah. We run out of time. It says, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and he worshipped him. See, that's where you fall short. You see him from afar, but you won't worship him. Because worship means to fall prostrate as an indication of surrender. But this man was possessed by legions of demons. But the Bible says he worshipped. He, he was doing the right thing. But there was something wrong with his worship. It said he worshipped and then he cried out with a loud voice and this is what he said. What have I to do with you, Jesus? Son of the Most High God. You know what's amazing is that most of the disciples didn't know Jesus as the Son of God. Come on, come on. But we're talking about in the domain, in the, in, the, in the realm of the Spirit. This demon knew who he was, and this is what he said: "Why have you come to torment me?" In other words, there's a scripture in the 14th chapter of John where Jesus said, "The enemy comes, but he has no place." Hallelujah in me. See, the devil can't torment you unless there's a soul wound or something in common with the enemy. And if you're struggling with some stuff, it's because you got something in common with the devil. And like I said, maybe somebody sinned against you or maybe you committed a sin yourself. I remember this young lady, she was in, into the meth business, cooking meth. And she got saved and got sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And she said she had a meeting to go preach at. And so when she was getting ready to leave for to get the plane, she said the Holy Spirit began to deal with her about meth. 
and how she had some kind of connection in her spirit to the neck. So she said she laid on the bed and began to ask God to show her whatever it is that's giving the devil legal right with this meth stuff because I thought I was delivered. But it was still in her spirit. And God exposed what it was and got her delivered. And then when she went to the meeting, she said when she walked in the building, she smelled meth. Thousands of people come to hear the word. And she said, I'm smelling meth. And she asked the lady, she said, what was this place before it was turned into a sanctuary? She said it was a meth lab. Lord have mercy. You see, God knows everything. Yes, he, does. he knows exactly what the devil uses to loop you every time. Uh -huh. And if you're sincere, God can show you what the devil has an advantage over you before you go to him. Right. She wouldn't have had no, she wouldn't have been able to bring no liberty to nobody on, until she was liberal herself. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No, I don't have no time. <laughs> Listen at this. He said, I implore you. In other words, I beg you desperately. Do not torment me. Now, what I like about that is the devil, his job is to torment you. Yes, 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 yes. But when somebody's greater than him shows up, uh -uh. he gets tormented. Yes, yes, yes. Our job is to torment the devil. Come on, Pop. Everywhere Come we on. go, we Come are to torment the devil. When I go to certain places, he will get uncomfortable. Yes, oh, because they feel the presence of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, you are to carry the presence that upsets the devil. Yes. Come on, Pop. Yes, Everywhere Lord. we go, people ought to say, oh, I gotta get away from you. I know you do. Uh -huh. <laughs> get away or get free. Uh -huh. That's the truth. Uh -huh. This uh -huh. devil knew. He said, Don't torment me. Let me get to my main point. <laughs> okay. But this is what Jesus said. But Jesus said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what's your name? And he answered and said, my name is Legion, for we are men. Let me tell you something about the legion. The enemy is regimented. Come on, baby. Come on. So when they attack your life, they have strategy. They come to destroy what God has deposited in your life. But I want you to notice, he said there were legions. Jesus said, come out, and then he began to negotiate. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said. He begged him earnestly that he would not send